We are in Uherčice on the hill above the chateau and this place used to be a small hunting lodge that the hunters used for drinking, eating and relaxing. This video is going to be about hunting, which used to be the enjoyment of aristocracy for centuries. But hunting wasn't just a headless slaughtering of the animals. It had high culture, it helped cultivate the forests and it built the places like this in the middle of forests. There are more of them in the Colalto domain, as we are going to see. My name is Jan Koumar and I'm going to be your guide through this video about the hunting activities of the House of Colalto in the late 19th and the early 20th century. For aristocracy, hunting was considered a good sport for which the cultivation of the forests was important. As sport, it has its own system of superstitions, its own language and even its own saint, St. Hubertus. He was the patron of hunters, originally a bishop who saw a miraculous stack which held a crucifix between its antlers. The highest form of hunting was the par force hunting, the term that came from French par force de chien, by force of dogs. It was a stylized form of hunting in which the game was brought into the place in a crate, then released and the hunting route was known beforehand. The hunted animal was chased until it dropped from exhaustion or until it was caught up by dogs. Then the hunters gathered around the dying piece, which was shot or pierced by a knife. The hunt was ended by blowing the signal on the horn, the so-called halali. Such activities surely weren't just a form of entertainment. They required a well-practiced horsemanship, gamekeeping, physical strength and coordination. Hunting with its interconnected skills therefore belonged as an obligatory part to the education of a young aristocrat. Besides, hunt keeping and kennels were important as the same as well-preserved forest districts. The Colaltos hunted in their own forest districts administered by the gamekeepers and hierarchically built three of forest keepers. In each district there used to be a gamekeeper's lodge and there were many hunting houses built for the noble society together. Prince Emmanuel organized big autumn hunts in Uherčice and Brtnice. From Mitrov or Mitrovic, the forest district around the big farm, originally a hunting mansion within the view of Uherčice Chateau, we have some trophies which the childless prince later gave to his servants in his Viennese villa. His successors were at first hunting in Austrian Staats, but the most abundant were the forest of Brtnice, which also offered the best facilities. We are in Allee Chateau. This empire-style built chateau was used as a hunting mansion for the House of Colalto from the beginning of the 19th century to the mid-20th century. There are seven alleys going all around the chateau, so the hunters could choose which one to go and where to hunt. The chateau itself was used to celebrate at the end of the hunt, at the end of the festification. Hunting mansions and pavilions such as Alleje also offered the noble society the place where the simpler form of hunts than par force ceremony ended. These hunts consisted of simple shooting the animals, during one such occasion hundreds of pieces were shot. But at the end of such hunt there was also a final ritual in which the symbolic repentance of the hunters over the killed animals was expressed and it took place right at the hunting mansion or at least at the pavilion. The fact that the hunts were social events must be pointed out. The noble society gathered, hunted and celebrated together. It was just the autumn hunts what attracted the aristocratic neighbors to come to Brtnice or to Uherčice. The preserved guest books show the names of the Wiedmans from Luka, Dubskis from Lisice, but also the Blankensteins from Batelov, the Pars from Bechynie, the Palavicinis from Jemnice and others. Also the closer and farther relatives of the House of Colalto visited their hands. The Aponis, the noble family with a very distinct history of the renowned diplomats with a material base in Hungary, later in Slovakia, the Piatis or the Mensdorf Puis were frequent guests. Since the attendance of the noble society was high, it was necessary to make a repay visit. This is why Prince Octavian hunted in the forests of the Podstatskis, the Sternbachs, or in the Hungarian forest districts of his aristocratic peers. Also, the Italian hunts of his brother were a big family occasion. 
better cololtos hunted even in more distant places than Italy. Between January and April 1908, Prince Emmanuel made a journey to African Abyssinia, today Ethiopia, where, in the company of his friend Count Rudolf Saun, he hunted the exotic animals such as gazella, jackal, maribou or lions. Prince Emmanuel's travelogue that describes the number of hunted animals, trophies, but also the weather and local tribes has been preserved. Abyssinia was a really exotic country. Prince Emmanuel's journey started in Naples. The liner Renania took him from there to French Somalia and Djibouti, where the 300 km long railway to Abyssinia and Diredawa started. The three month long hunts then took place mainly in the countryside around the river Havash. On the way back to Austria, Prince Emmanuel also visited Cairo in Egypt and found some time to see the pyramids too. Now, you may ask what happened with the hunted game. Besides the trophies with the most interesting antlers, there was meat, of course, which was consumed, sold or given to the guests. As for the game composition, venison created the most frequently hunted species, together with pheasant, partridges, rabbits and hares. The damage caused in animals, such as a fox and badger, were chased too. On the other hand, the stag or deer in general was among the killed pieces only rarely. The end of the Second War drew the aristocratic hunts to a close. The forest districts were still maintained, but since the post-war situation and the confiscation didn't make hunting possible anymore, the village association started administering them on their own cost. But more about it in the other videos. Hunting evokes a high society, well-dressed gentlemen and ladies on horses or opulent dinner parties. All these things really happened, but as was said, there was more behind it. The hunting activities of the House of Colalto are the reasons why we can still visit the alleys in forests or the hunting mansions. They're also the reason for a good maintenance of the fields and woods where hunting took place. It can be therefore said that the hunting activities of the House of Colalto left an unerasable trace on the face of Moravian countryside. It surely wasn't the only trace. The next time we're going to have a look at one brick plant in the possession of the House of Colalto, which left a big trace in the construction industry. I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time.